Hi, I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we'll be taking a quick look at this development board, which features an ESP32 microcontroller. We're going to compare this ESP32 microcontroller to the ESP8266 microcontroller. We'll run a basic sketch on here and we'll talk a little bit about some future plans that I have for some ESP32s that I have here. So while I roll the intro, take a moment to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. And let's get started. So a couple of weeks ago, I picked up a handful of these ESP32 development boards from AliExpress. And they're around about $5 each, so they're not particularly expensive, but they are really flexible. Now, similar to the Raspberry Pi Pico that we reviewed previously, and also the Node MCU, we can run Arduino style C++ code on these, or we can also set them up to run MicroPython. Now, if we pop over to take a look at the board physically, you'd be forgiven for thinking that it was very similar, if not the same, as this ESP8266 based Node MCU that we looked at in previous videos. And they are very similar, where the key difference is around uh, this module here. You'll note that the ESP32 module has a significantly larger footprint than the 8266. The main difference, of course, here is internal and you can't really see too much difference. The development boards are very similar. We've got the uh, you know, GPIO pins that we can break out to connect to. We could actually work with just the ESP32 module here or even the ESP8266 module here, but the development board gives us a nice clean way of doing some experiments with these and the pins on the bottom connect nicely into uh, some breadboards. It also uh, adds the controller for USB in here so that we've got USB control and we can program them and power them easily as well. Now on both the ASP8266 and the ASP32 have Wi-Fi connectivity and you can see the antennas. Uh, you can see the antenna on the 8266 better. It's this copper section here. Um, you might be able to make it out just underneath the solder mask on the ASP32. Uh, so while the 8266 and the 32 both have Wi-Fi connectivity. Something the ESP32 has, which the 8266 doesn't, is the ESP32 features Bluetooth low energy and also Bluetooth classic connectivity, whereas the ESP8266 is there's no Bluetooth connectivity at all on the 8266. The other thing that the ESP32 has that the uh, 8266 doesn't is a Hall Effect sensor and that's built into the unit. That Hall Effect sensor can be used to detect magnetic fields. So in the context of home automation, you could actually just pass a magnet straight past this metal shield here uh, and it would detect the presence of that magnet and you could use it as a door open closed type sensor just straight from here. The ESP32 is also a dual core processor that can run 32-bit code whereas the 8266 uh, is only a single core processor and I'm not sure but I believe it only runs up to 16-bit code. Similarly to the Raspberry Pi Pico that we looked at, uh, this is the dual core processor. Now this particular development kit has 38 IO pins to connect to various sensors or LEDs. And when it comes to IO, the ESP32 has tons more IO than the 8266, uh, allowing for a lot more connectivity. And of course, because it features Bluetooth Low Energy and Bluetooth Classic connectivity, there's lots of potential for more connected projects that don't need wires either. You could theoretically even create a custom Bluetooth keyboard using one of these ESP32s. And I do have an upcoming project to use one of these units as a Bluetooth remote trigger for my Canon camera. And then by extension from there, I'm also planning to build a custom control center keyboard for when I'm filming these videos. Uh, and that will give me better control over my camera 
my teleprompter, my lights, and OBS for when I am filming. So for a practical demonstration, I'm going to do my usual thing here of flashing a couple of LEDs. I've popped the uh, ASP32 into my breadboard here. I've got a couple of LEDs going through some current limiting resistors uh, and then into some GPIO pins. I've got 22 and 23 over here. Now this is obviously a very basic sketch. Um, but this is just an intro video and we're not going to go too far into depth just yet. We'll save the in-depth discussions for other videos. Okay, so I've already put together this very simple blink sketch. Um, all it is going to do, uh, you know, we've defined our uh, LED pins and we've got pin one and two are both output pins and we are setting pin one to high, pin two to low, waiting half a second and then sitting pin one to low and pin two to high. So it's going to oscillate between the two pins on here. Now I've set the script up, but my Arduino dev environment isn't yet set up to work with the ESP32. So we'll go through setting that up now. And to do that, we're going to go to the Arduino menu up here in the top left and go to preferences. Uh, and I need to go to additional boards manager URLs and I'm going to paste in this here, which is the URL of JSON index that allows me to uh, add those boards. So I'm going to click OK on that. And then what we should be able to do is go to tools and click on boards. And if we click on boards manager, we should then be able to search for ESP and you'll see we've got the ESP32 board in here and we can click install and I'll put a link in the description to a tutorial that's been written up by someone that's uh, very good at uh, these tutorials. So now that that has been installed we can hit close and if I go to the tools menu again we should be able to select boards and we've got ESP32 Arduino we should just be able to select ESP32 dev module. I'm going to then go to port here and I'm going to use the USB serial 0001. Uh, and so we've got the 32 dev module here. And hopefully if I click upload now, we should start compiling the sketch. And I'll just make my console a bit bigger so we can see what's going on. It's writing that out. And over here, our LEDs are now flashing back and forth. Blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. Uh, and that is exactly what we expected. So that's a really quick overview of the ESP32 and a very oversimplified one at that. When it comes time to build some more complex projects, we're going to dig into some things like setting up Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. And I've got a few ideas for upcoming projects featuring the ESP32. So make sure that you're subscribed if you want to see what's in store for these units. I mentioned a couple before, uh, of how we're going to utilize these. Uh, I'll also be putting a link in the video description down below to a repository of project ideas you can draw some inspiration from. And I'll personally also be looking to build some of those projects myself. Because the unit has Wi-Fi built in, we could very easily use this in a home automation context as well by sending and receiving MQTT messages to turn things on and off and you could quite easily write a custom app to turn things on and off using Bluetooth as well from your mobile phone. That is all we have for this video and I do hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to leave a comment down below with home automation ideas you'd like to see me cover in future videos and how you're thinking of using ESP32s in your smart home. Don't forget to follow Hive Mind Automation on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're not already subscribed, now's a great time to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week. And if you are in the market for a VPN provider, I've placed an affiliate link for NordVPN in the video description as well. I've chosen to partner with NordVPN because they've got the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers I've seen. They also have a strict no logs policy and servers all over the planet. On top of that, they've got apps for just about every platform around, including Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. So no matter what platform you're using, you can protect your information while you browse the web. And that can be whether you're using public internet at a coffee shop or when you're at home. 
So get a VPN today and use my link below to sign up for NordVPN. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, but you're not in the market for a VPN provider, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions through buy me a coffee are put towards making more and better content for you to enjoy. I want to thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation, and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.